in this video we're going to be looking at uh, orders inside of metric so just everything about orders how you can segment them uh, export them looking at order pages inside of metric adding notes everything uh, to get started we've just clicked orders on the left here and now we can see all the orders on our store uh, by default it's just going to show every single order failed ones cancelled ones everything but you can leverage metric segmenting system which i've talked about in another video you can find on the YouTube channel uh, to choose like which orders we want to look at. So we might want to say, okay, give us all the orders that are marked completed. We can do that. Now we can see it's gone from 505 down to 397. Or we could add another one and say, okay, I want of these 397 completed orders, give me all the orders that have a total, let's say between um, 100 and 150. Give it a sec to segment so we can see that there are oh still oh we might need to just click that oh i can see over here <laughs> the hundred that we applied uh didn't work so i'm just going to type that again and then click the segment button because i've disabled instant segmenting so now we can see there are 146 orders uh, also up here you can choose some segments you can create your own custom segments so we might want to save this as like completed 100 150 orders uh, here i've made a custom one which is orders last 30 days so we can click that and see how that's generated which is orders where the order created is in the past 30 days you can see it didn't update here because i've disabled instant segmenting so i'm just going to click the segment button to update the orders here so there are three orders in the last 30 days and there are also a bunch of suggested segments which metric is suggesting like for example guest orders where it shows you all the orders that were made by the customer type of guest segment again so we can see 67 orders were made uh, by guests so they checked out without logging in or without registering just give it a moment cool all right so um how about we actually look at some of these orders so I might just say, okay, I want to look up order 202. So I'm going to just type that in to do a quick search, even though it's right there. And then I'm going to click on that. So now we can see uh, the orders page, which looks a little bit similar to the WooCommerce one, a little bit prettier, <laughs> um, and just a little bit more integrated with metrics. So if I click through a product here, it'll show me the products page, like the red collar page, which will show me all the sales stats for the red collar. Uh, so it's all just kind of tying everything together. So over here, we can see just the order items. Um, if there are any discounts, we'd see that here, your shipping or anything like that. When the order happened, on the right, we've got the little customer details area. So a little map where they are, billing and shipping address, email phone number. Um, here we can see the customer checked out as a guest because we were applying that guest uh, segment before. The customer has a profile, so we can click that to view like Curtis's actual customer profile inside of Metric. They've only made one order under that email, so it's just showing here. Just click back to that order now. Down here we can see some extra data. It really um, depends on the order what you're going to see here. Uh, sometimes you'll see like the payment method here. Oh, we can see that here. PayPal, the shipping method if there was one. Different stats like that. Uh, but here we just have the completed date, the paid date, and also the customer IP. If we click that, we can actually see um, on another website like where this IP is located. So it would be really good if you're looking at an order and trying to tell if it's a fraudulent one inside a metric. You have that all in metric, one place. Uh, on the bottom here, we have custom fields. So custom meta. Um, there isn't much here for this one, but we can also edit and then add new custom meta. Uh, it's also really interesting how you can segment uh, orders by custom meta back on the orders page. So it can be really valuable if you have, for example, a custom uh, like kind of input during checkout where it says, how did you find us? And people enter that. That's normally going to be saved as a custom field inside of this order. So you can then segment by that and say, okay, give me all the orders where people have said they'd heard of us from Google. And then you could maybe do something with that, like emailing them and saying, what did you search for on Google? Or just kind of targeting different uh, emails to them based on that. That's completely up to you. On the right here, so we, there's a couple of little things you can edit inside a metric. Uh, you can change the status. So all you have to do is just click that and then I could say, okay, make this order um, failed. Just give it a sec to load. So then it's actually updating the order over on your site inside of WooCommerce and marking it as failed. If you had it as processing and then marked it as complete and you, the WooCommerce completed emails would send, it's all going to work exactly the same as if you change the status inside of WooCommerce. 
Uh, an interesting thing to note is actually metric will leave an order note for you and just say metric last status change by price items just so you can see which metric user is making that status change of course we can also add other order notes here um, we can add a private one or we could add one for the customer and then we'll email it to them we'll just say uh, ship today cool so that's now updated it's updated over on WooCommerce and it's in metric and then of course if you want to do anything more complicated you can edit the order and go do it over on your site in the WooCommerce uh, dashboard just head back to all orders now so we can now see it's updated and it's failed since we changed it so it's all happening in real time I'm just going to clear the search here and there is one more or well, a couple more things I want to show you before we finish up and I'm actually just going to clear these filters. So we're just looking at all the orders again. Just give it a sec to load. So we have the 505 orders again. Uh, you can change the order. So by default, it's like newest orders first by creator date, but you could do it by other dates or the total. So we can see, all right, by total, the biggest order we've had ever was $700 um, for 13 items, which is really cool. Down the bottom, we can see some totals. So the 505 orders, but also like the total gross sales for those, total items, average order value, and average order items. And then the other thing I wanna show you is that while you're looking here, you might say, okay, like just quickly, I'm going through it. If you mouse over um, with your mouse, like a customer's name, this tooltip actually appears, which is pretty cool and just shows you a little bit of info about them. So um, their address and email and where they are on the map. Cool, so I think I've covered everything. Oh, there is one more thing. <laughs> Lucky I didn't forget. Um, you might see these checkboxes box, check here and wonder what they do. These are for changing, currently just for changing the status. So if I click that, I can actually say, okay, I've highlighted these two orders. Now I want to update the order status of just those orders. This can be really valuable, valuable if you're combining it with the segmenting system. So you might find all the orders with the status of processing. Uh, you might fulfill those all and you just want to quickly mark them as completed. You can do that. If I click that up here, I can actually select all of the orders on the current page. So it's like, uh, how many are we looking at? 50, so you can see here 50 per page. And I can update the order status of all of them, um, which I'm not gonna do, <laughs> since it's just a test store. And of course you can export orders as well. Um, so if I click that, I can do an export right now. I can email it to me, or I can set up a recurring export. There are also uh, some settings, which I'm gonna talk about in a separate export video. Um, but there are some that are just for orders like one row per line item, customizing the order columns or the custom fields involved uh, in the export. So if you have any questions, just let me know. You can leave a comment or just uh, contact me on Metrics Live Chat. Thank you very much for watching.